a happy heart with the Lord. Ask this question here today that I want you to think about. Is God at your right hand? Is God at your right hand? I'm not sure how many of you have been following along with the Sunday school lessons for this quarter, but they have been tremendous Sunday school lessons. In every lesson that we have had this quarter, we have taken a look at a person of valor. We have taken a look at a person of courage in scripture. From Joshua to Paul, we have saw the acts of valor. We have saw the acts of courage and boldness. And we have seen that those acts of courage, those acts of valor, those acts of boldness, we have seen that they are not born necessarily of man and what he has learned in the world. We have seen that they are born in the heart of all of those who have faith in the Lord. So I want to say to all of you today who have been following along with the Sunday school lessons, I want to say to you today, to all of you who have also been following along with the sermons that I have been preaching for this month, I want to say to all of you that we have reached a point of convergence where both the Sunday school lessons and the sermons that I have preached over the past month and over the past three months, they have merged, they have come together. And I believe that the spirit has led us to this point of convergence. Now, as you know, for the past couple of months, I have been focusing in on being a vessel of the Lord. And I have also been focusing in on our spiritual health and having a healthy heart spiritually. We have seen that the end results of living with a poor and unhealthy heart spiritually can lead to a spirit of infirmity. That is a spirit that moves recklessly that is a spirit that is paralyzed and also unable to move as well. As we saw Solomon once say in Proverbs said that being in poor spiritual health, he said that it dries the bones. It is not good for the health. Now I believe that all of us, I believe all of us desire to be in the best shape that we could possibly want to be in. Why is that the case? Some may ask, well, we know that there is, there are great benefits to all of those who allow the Lord to be the medicine for their soul. We know that there are great benefits to all of those who sit at the buffet that is the word of God. Now, what I want to do here today is I want to take a, 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 another look, one last look at having a healthy and a happy heart with God. I want to take a look at the benefits again, diving into the benefits of living a healthy life spiritually today. Now in my sermon last week, you may recall that I briefly mentioned David and I spoke about, I said about how you can open up the book of Psalms and you can find often find a random Psalm and you will see that David often spoke of how his heart longed for the Lord. So in last week's sermon mentioning that, I thought about, I thought ahead to this week's sermon. So here in this week's sermon, what I want to do here today is I want to refer to a couple of Psalms of David. And I want to focus in here on this man who scripture describes as a man after God's heart. I want to focus in on David's heart. And I want to focus in on why that was actually said in scripture about his heart. What was so special about David's heart? David, I tell you again today, had a very healthy heart spiritually. And I believe that we should want to imitate the kind of heart that David had. I believe we should want to imitate the kind of devotion that David had in his heart for the Lord. Now here in my key verse for today's 
message. We see that David tells us that he always, always sets the Lord before him. Now, what does that mean? I believe that this statement tells us a couple of very important things about David. First, I want you to know that I believe this statement tells us a great deal about David's heart. It tells us about the shape. It tells us about the condition of David's heart. And when I say his heart, again, I'm not talking about the one that pumps blood through the body. I'm talking about his spirit. I'm talking about his soul. With that being said, secondly, I want to point out to all of you today that I believe David's statement also tells us a great deal about his mindset. What I mean by this is that it tells us about uh, what David's focus was. I believe it tells us that in his heart, again, in his soul, in his spirit, I believe it tells us that God was David's devotion. What I mean by that is that David put God first in his heart, in his spirit, and therefore David put God first in his life. Now, this becomes a bit confusing to many of us. Putting God first is sometimes very difficult for most of us to understand, we began to question what it means to put the Lord first. Now, some of us, we take putting God first, we will take it literally. So when we wake up in the morning, the first thing that we try to do is something for the Lord. We will take that literally. Now, what I want to do here for a moment here is I want to tackle the idea of putting God first, putting the Lord first from David's perspective so that we can have an even better understanding of what it means to put the Lord first in our life. So let us consider what David expresses here in both of my key verses for today's message so that we can have an understanding of what it means to put the Lord before us. Now I want you to understand that David when he says that he always sets the Lord before him, I want you to understand that David was expressing his devotion to the Lord. Now by his devotion, I want you to understand that in his devotion, David was expressing his dedication. Keep that word in mind. Devotion, dedication. He was expressing here his dedication to God in his own heart, in his soul, in his spirit. David is telling all of us that he puts all of his hope, that he put all of his trust in the Lord. In his heart, in his soul, David is telling all of us that his hope, his trust is not in somebody else. It is not in man. It is not in the world. It is in God. It is in the Lord. So what I want you to hear here today, what I want you to understand here today about David's heart is, is that David allowed his heart to be consumed with the Lord. David allowed his heart to be filled with God so that every decision, so that every step that he took, it was not guided by something he had heard from somebody else. It was not guided by the world's logic. It was not guided by man. All of his decisions, every step that David took, it was guided by God, who was the devotion of his heart. Does that make sense today? I hope that makes sense. Now, I want you to know that this again becomes very evident to us here 
we see David say in his own words here in my key verse for today, David says, he, God is at my right hand. Underline that right hand. If you have that in your Bible, underline that it should be there. David says, God is at my right hand. And then David says, I shall not be moved at my right hand. We again see how David's heart was totally dependent on the Lord. Now I want you to pay very close attention to that right hand. What does that mean? What does it mean that, that God was David's right hand? at his right hand, he says. Let us think about this for a moment. Now to keep someone at your right hand, it would show that you put a lot of faith in that person, right? It it would show that you have a lot of trust in that person. We would consider that this person is, is someone who we have a great deal of faith in, a great deal of trust in, And and this would say a lot about our bond in our relationship with that person who we are, who we have said is our right hand man or our right hand woman, our right hand person. For example, I would consider that my brother is my right hand man. And I believe he would tell you the same thing. We have gone through a lot together in this life, growing up together. And so I have a great deal of trust with my brother. I have a great deal of faith in my brother. Right hand man, right hand person. We trust those who are our right hand person. We we trust what they have to say to us. So we truly value them. We truly do trust them. We trust that they will be there in our times of need. We trust that when we need help, they will be there. We trust that when we need support, our right hand person will be there. We trust that when we are in need of assistance, our right hand person will what? Be there. So for David to say that God was at his right hand, it shows us the kind of bond, it shows us the kind of relationship. In other words, what it shows us, it shows us the kind of fellowship that David shared with the Lord. You see, David recognized that he needed God's help He recognized that he needed God's support. He recognized that he needed God's assistance while on his journey. Now, the problem that many of us face today is that many of us don't recognize that we need the Lord. Many of us do not recognize that we are in need of God's help, that we are in need of God's support while we are on this journey. What we end up trying to do while we are on this journey is we end up trying to take on everything by ourselves and without the Lord. Now, where does that get us? We know that that is not good for us. Again, as I said in in a sermon recently, said that we live in a world that is constantly seeking to press down on us with burden after burden. And many of us, we we do nothing but try to bear all of those burdens by ourselves. And again, I ask, what does that get us? The only thing it ever gets us is, is more problems, more troubles, and more stress. We know that carrying so much weight again is not good for our heart. And again, when I say our heart, I'm talking about our soul and our spirit. Yet we attempt to do it anyway. 
We try to carry all of our problems, all of our burdens, all of our troubles, all of our stress. We try to carry it all by ourselves. And we end up doing nothing but hurting our spirit, hurting our soul. Carrying so much weight again is not good for the heart. So we must determine whether or not we are allowing God to be at our right hand. We must determine whether or not we are allowing God to be our heart's devotion, because this is key to how happy we will be in our soul. Do we recognize that we need God's help? Do we recognize that we need his support and his assistance today? The unfortunate answer to this question is that since so many of us do not recognize that we need his help, that we need his support, the unfortunate answer to this question is that the only thing we end up doing is hurting ourselves in our soul and in our spirit today. Now, as I have expressed in recent weeks, there are many great benefits to those who seek to take care of their physical health. But at the same time, there are many great benefits to all those who seek to care for their spiritual health as well. And so what I want to do here is I want to take a look at those great benefits to all those who make God their heart's devotion, all those who make God at their right hand, who put the Lord at their right hand, who God is with. There are great benefits to all of us who have the Lord with us, who carry up, who carry him with us as we go on our journey. The first couple of benefits that we are going to take a look at here today can be found in a very familiar Psalm. I want to direct your attention here to the 23rd Psalm for just a moment here today. In the 23rd Psalm, we find David speaking of how God is his shepherd. Now, I want you to consider here with me for a moment today that the Lord is your shepherd. I want you to consider here for a moment with me today, the Lord being your shepherd and that he's not only guiding David here, but that he's guiding you, he's guiding all of us, his children, that he is guiding us by the hands. Let us imagine here for a moment, the Lord as our shepherd is hurting and guiding us by the hands. And let us take a look here at this Psalm. David tells us that God as his shepherd or with God as his shepherd, David says that he did not want for anything. That's the first thing that we see. This means that the Lord was David's caretaker. This means that the Lord was David's provider. This meant that as his caretaker, as his provider, David felt that he did not need anything because God was caring for him because God was providing for him. So imagine for a moment how David must have felt in his heart to have God being his caretaker, to having God being his provider. See, our wants are what drives many of us today. As I mentioned in last week's sermon, most of us, we become consumed by our wants and we take on a a worldly diet trying to to get all the things that we desire in the world, trying to consume what we can of the world. Unfortunately, as we all know, being on the grind and being on the hustle to satisfy our wants can become overly burdensome, can become overly stressful as well, which we again know is not good for our soul. Yet with God as our caretaker and with God as our provider, that stress and that burden 
all those stresses, all those burdens, all those worries that we may have from what is going on around us in the world, all of that is taken away from us. All of that is alleviated from us because God again is at our right hand. He is our shepherd and the Lord is taking away all of what burdens us in our heart because he's providing for us, right? All of, all of what is hurting us in our spirit today that is taken away because again, God is providing his care for our soul today. I hope that makes sense to all of you today. So we are already well aware of one of the benefits of making the Lord our heart's de devotion. God is a stress reliever. God is a stress reliever relieving us of our burdens and our stress, it again creates a healthy heart spiritually. Now, let us continue to look here at some more benefits here. We'll see here as our shepherd in the second and the third verse of the 23rd Psalm, we'll see that David wrote that the Lord leads him by still waters and that the Lord restore, restores his soul. So again, as our shepherd, David tells us that God not only cares for him, that God not only cares for us, but that he leads us, that he guides us, and that the Lord provides for us as well. But most importantly here, we see that God also restores our soul. God restores our heart. God restores our spirit today. So I want you to understand that this means that God restoring our soul. I want you to understand that this means that God strengthens us in our heart. God strengthens the heart. God strengthens your spirit. God strengthens your soul today. Benefits. Benefits for making the Lord your heart's devotion, keeping him at your right hand. We see in Isaiah, we know that it is written, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not weary. They shall walk and not faint. We have heard that said. We know that scripture well. We have heard it over and over again throughout our lives. Now, I want you to watch what happens to the heart that is being led by and strengthened by God here. We'll see it say there in the fourth verse. We'll see that David tells us that with God at his right hand. Watch this. David says that he is able to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And David says to us that his heart was not troubled. Says that his heart was not troubled. It was not stressed. David tells us that his heart was not filled with fear. benefits. So with a healthy heart, spiritually, we see that another benefit here with the strengthened heart is that fear is removed. Fear again is alleviated. Fear again is taken away from the hearts whose devotion is the Lord's. Now I want you to understand, I want you to see something else here for a moment. I want you to see that our fear is then replaced by something else. Now we'll see that David said with God at his right hand in the fifth verse, David said that in the presence of his enemies, David said that God prepared a table before him. Now this is further expounded upon in the 27th Psalm. And I'll direct your attention there. You can look at the second and the third verse in the 27th Psalm, where you will see David say, when the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. 
David then said, though an army may encamp against me, he said, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, David said, in this I will be what? In this I will be what? In this I will be confident, David said. So here again is the next benefit to one whose heart is healthy, to one whose heart is devoted to the Lord. We have seen strength, and now we see confidence. Now we see courage. Fear has been removed from that heart whose devotion is God, and that fear has been replaced with confidence and with courage. Now, let us consider here today for a moment. Let us consider here for a moment today that our enemies encamp about us as well. Let us consider today that when we are surrounded by our enemies, and again, some of us may think people, I want to think beyond people. Let us consider that our enemies can also be all of our troubles. Our troubles antagonize us, don't they? Our troubles, our afflictions, our infirmities, all of what we go through in this life that always seem to be against us on our left, on our right, in front of us and, and behind us, they are encamped against us. We don't have to be fearful of what we go through. Do you hear me here today? We don't have to be fearful of our troubles. We don't have to be fearful of our afflictions. We don't have to be uh, troubled by, by and worried by all of our infirmities. We don't have to be fearful of those things. We don't have to be fearful of anybody. Because again, that fear has been removed. That fear has been taken away and replaced with confidence and courage through the inner dwelling of the Lord who dwells inside of all of our hearts today. We are filled with confidence through the Lord to face all of our trials and all of our tribulations when we put the Lord before us and we, we have God at our right hand, we have confidence to face all of our trials. We have confidence to face all of our tribulations. Not only do we have confidence, but we are also filled with courage. We are filled with the courage to stand up to all that we may be going through in our lives today. Do you know that today? We are filled with the courage to stand up to all that we may be going through, knowing that God is going to deliver us from whatever it is that we're going through. Knowing that God is going to carry us over every obstacle that may be before us. We have the courage to look those obstacles in the eyes and be confident in knowing that we are going to have the victory over the obstacles that are before us. All of our enemies, all of our trials, our tribulations, our troubles, our burdens, whatever it is that may be stressing us in our hearts today, have the confidence to know that God is going to bring you through. It's sad in my prayer today that we know that God will make a way out of no way. Do you believe that today? Now look at all of these wonderful benefits to those whose hearts devotion is the Lord. Stress and burdens alleviated, taken away, removed. Fear removed. Strength, confidence, and courage 
born in the soul and now a part of the mindset of those with a healthy heart. Do you see now why David said he put the Lord before him? Do you see now why David said that God was his first priority, that he put the Lord first? Do you see now why David said that his heart was dedicated to the Lord? Do you see now what made David's heart so special? Because he had trust in what God could do for him. David, again, I tell you, he had a spiritually healthy heart, a very strong heart. That's what we, that's what we ought to want to have. That, that strong heart spiritually, that healthy heart spiritually. These, I believe, are truly wonderful benefits to having a healthy spiritual heart. But now I want to show you the even greater benefit that David speaks of here in my key verse for today. There is an even greater benefit to having a spiritually healthy heart that I want all of us to see. I want to direct your attention back to the 16th Psalm to where David tells us that last benefit. David says here to us, he says again in my key verses, he says, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. David said, I shall not be moved. Therefore, David said, my heart is what? Glad. My heart is glad, David says. And my glory, David says, rejoices. The last benefit is one that I have been mentioning in my recent sermons. And I have been mentioning it and talking about it a great deal. The last benefit to having God be your heart's devotion. The last benefit is a happy heart. A happy heart. Let us understand that the happiness that David is uh, speaking about here, the happiness that is being spoken of, is talking about peace, peace of heart, peace of mind. This peace is not a peace that is born of this world. The world cannot give you the peace that David is talking about here. The, the only one that can give you the kind of peace that David is talking about here is God is the Lord. David has been expressing to us his peace of mind, his, his peace of heart while on his journey. The kind of peace that again, David was talking about that he was experiencing. He was experiencing because God was at his right hand. God was his devotion. He was dedicated to the Lord. The kind of peace that David was experiencing could only come from God. Now, while we may consider that this happiness and peace is, is while we are living in this world today, I want you to understand that David is speaking beyond this physical life. Again, we live in a world where two domains are intertwining, the physical and the spiritual. David, I believe, was looking beyond this physical. David, I believe, was looking ahead at the greatest benefit that one can enjoy from having a healthy heart spiritually. Now, we'll see someone else actually preach from and quote this psalm in a sermon. In scripture, I want to direct your attention to the second chapter of Acts here for a moment. Down in starting at the 25th verse, when you get to the second chapter of Acts, you see the one who was preaching this sermon was Peter. And we'll see that Peter said in that scripture, Peter said, for David says concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken 
Therefore, my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You make me full of joy in your presence. That is a direct quote from the 16th Psalm. That is what we just read in our response reading. That is what Peter was quoting in his sermon. Now, still looking here at the second chapter of Acts, we'll see that Peter goes on to conclude in the 29th and in the 31st verse here, Peter goes on to conclude and say, men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David. He says there in the 31st verse, he says, he foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. So Peter concluded that David's Psalm, that 16th Psalm that we were reading for our response reading today, and that I have been preaching from, Peter concluded that this Psalm was also a Psalm of resurrection looking ahead at the greatest benefit that one can have from having a healthy heart spiritually. We'll see that there's a mention of Hades in Peter's sermon. And you'll recall from the 16th Psalm where David mentioned Sheol, which is a place that we would call hell the resting place for the souls of the unrighteous. Eternal suffering is all that awaits all of those who have lived their life with an unhealthy and a corrupt heart. That is truly saddening to live in this world, to have an opportunity to get your heart right and not take advantage of this opportunity that all of us have. So if you have been living your life with an unhealthy heart, with a, a corrupt heart today, I want to encourage you today to get your heart right. You see, physically, when we want to get our heart right, we exercise, we diet. That's what I said in, in the past, in my recent sermons. But in order for us to get our hearts right today, spiritually, we must turn to the Lord. So for all of those who may have, who may be suffering from an unhealthy heart, an unhealthy spirit, an unhealthy soul today, I encourage you to turn to the Lord to make God your devotion, to have him at your right hand. We have seen the benefits today, all of them. Our, our burdens, our troubles, our stress, alleviated fear, removed from us the things that will either run us mad or, or paralyze us in our spirit. We have seen it over the weeks that those things are taken away from us. And we have now seen today that God will fill us with confidence and with courage to be able to tackle all of our issues, all of our troubles, all of what we go through in this life. We have the confidence and the courage to be able to make it again another day, to be able to make it in this life. And then when this life is over with, when all of this physical passes away, we see that having a healthy heart in this world will lead us to an eternal life with the Lord in his heavenly kingdom. Our heart will truly then know peace. We will have peace that cannot be given to us by this world. We will have peace that is given to us by the Lord and our hearts will be happy forevermore. So again, I encourage all of those today with an unhealthy heart to turn to the Lord and to get your heart right today. 
so that you too can experience a peace of mind while living in this world, knowing that God is going to take care of you, that God is going to provide for you. But even after this world, knowing that you will be in his presence eternally forevermore. Amen. 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 Amen.